Hey guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to assemble the Pit Boss 456D pellet smoker. In another video I did the unboxing of the pellet smoker and I was like a kid in a candy shop opening it up, going through all the different parts, checking out the quality of the material. So definitely check that video out if you haven't looked at it yet. But this video is mainly just about installing and assembling the actual smoker. So if you need some help figuring out how to put it together, then this is the video for you. All right guys, stick around, let's get to the video. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is set this thing hopper side down on the cardboard to protect the finish. So the hopper is on this side here. So we're going to set that down. I'm gonna push these little cords in a little bit so they don't get too squished. And maybe I'll put that there so that the cords have a little bit of standoff distance. There we go. So we've got it set up so that we can see the bolt holes for where the legs are supposed to go. So we've got all our legs here. And the first thing we're gonna do according to the instruction manual is to hook these legs up to the smoker. Basically on the non hopper side, which is this side, we're installing the legs that are going to have the caster wheels attached to them. So that's this one. All right, I've just got a basic Phillips head screwdriver here. So I'm gonna screw these on. Okay, so that's one leg on. Now we're going to take the other leg with the caster wheel attachment, which is this nub right here. And we're gonna do the same thing. So we'll set up our bolts with a lock washer followed by a washer. There we go. So they're all in finger tight now and we're gonna tighten them up with our Phillips screwdriver. All right, the next step is to install the shelf. And when we're installing the shelf, we wanna make sure that the flat surface is facing up like this. So we'll put that in here and it goes near the bottom. The next step is to install these caster wheels. So this is going to involve a different set of hardware. We need these little pins here and the large washer and the cotter pin. So we'll take this out. We've got our two large pins that will go through the wheel. We've got our two cotter pins that are gonna hold the pins in the wheel and our two large washers. So I don't think there's any one side in particular that needs to be put on. They look identical on each side. So, so the wheel goes on the outside of the leg, the pin goes through, slides in like that. Then our washer goes on. And then we put our cotter pin in to hold that washer and make sure that that pin does not fall out. There we go. So you can see it's all secure now. It's not going anywhere. It spins really nice. Same thing on the other side, stick our pin in the wheel put it through this opening. There we go. So that's not going anywhere. Spins really nice. We got two wheels on this 456D. So now we're gonna set this up so it's upright. The next step is to install our lid stopper. This is what stops the lid from opening all the way up. So it's got a pre-installed screw right here. Again, it's a Phillips screw, but you can use your socket set if you, if you have one. So now we're gonna slide it into that little opening there and then put that back on. All right, so we've got our lid stopper on. As you can see, it's gonna stop the lid from opening all the way. Now we're going to install the hopper box. So I'll just turn this around 
so you can see it. We have the opening that we're going to slide the hopper box into. So we'll take this and we'll slide that in. And then from the inside, we're going to want to take our bolts with lock washer and a regular washer and carefully screw it to the actual hopper box from the inside of the heating chamber. Now it's a little bit difficult to see, but you can see that there's a long ridge here and this is kind of blocking you from tightening that bolt, which is right there. See that bolt that we just installed? So there's not a really clear path to get there unless you have some sort of mini socket set with the perfect extension. So we're just gonna use this Phillips screwdriver and you know, it's at an angle. We're gonna try our best to tighten that without stripping it. Okay, so that's pretty tight. We've got another one on the other side, so you can see that this is kind of blocked from getting there, but if we come at it from an angle, you can still get it. So we'll tighten that up. There we go. The bottom ones are a bit easier. So we've got this one right here. Again, this is tight in here, but I can still kind of get my Phillips screwdriver in to tighten it up. And then there's one more that is over here on this side. I can barely see it, but if I feel my way onto it, I can insert the screwdriver and do some finger gymnastics and we can kind of get to it. Really hard to see, but what we're doing is we're just tightening that screw in the back. So a little bit of precision work here. It's kind of like working on a Honda. If you've ever done any car repair on a Honda, everything is super packed in and really hard to get anything done because your hands have to squeeze into all sorts of little tight areas. There we go. So that is done. Now we're going to insert this horizontal plate into the hopper box. And this is called the clean out plate, I believe. But it just screws in like that. Okay. And now if we look on the inside, we can see that that plate is right there. Okay, we'll close that up. Now we have to attach these little temperature probe ends, connectors. So we'll take this side and these look to be sort of uh, the same thing. So I don't think it matters which one it goes in, um, but we'll connect it. Make sure we're being really careful and ensuring that the rubber is still covering those connections. Well, this is a little bit tougher than I thought it would be. Well, first of all, I'm going to undo this. Here we go. That gives me a bit more slack to work with. Perfect. And there we go. Now, after these are connected, there's a probe wire casing that is installed onto the hopper box that protects the connection from the elements. So there's two pre-installed screws here that we can take out. So now we're going to put this casing on, but first I'm going to tuck the excess wire back into the casing just so there's not a ton of extra slack. And I don't want any pinching here. So now it looks like it goes this way. Here we go. Yeah, it makes sense. Okay, so there's some drain holes down here. So if moisture does get in, it can drain out the bottom. So that should face the bottom. This should face the actual fire uh, heating chamber. So we'll line that up, make sure we're not pinching anything. And then we'll put the screws back on. Move this around just to make sure I'm not pinching anything as I go. There we go. 
So that connection is now protected from the elements with that casing. And now we'll move on to the next step. Next, we need to install the power cord holder onto the hopper box. So we'll take out these pre-installed screws here. And this just goes on like this. Pretty simple, pretty easy. And we'll get this guy on here. There we go. Now we will tighten this up. And I believe this is just for wrapping your power cord around when you're storing it, you're not using it, which is a nice feature. Now we'll install the handle onto the lid here. So it comes pre-installed with all the hardware that you need. So we'll just take that out, put that on the hopper box for now. And what we're gonna do is open up the lid. And we're going to install these from the inside. So you just take this bolt with the lock washer and regular washer, put it through there. And then on the other side, you wanna put this little bevel there and that's going to be what this screws into. So I'm going to do that from both sides. There we go. And now showing you from the other side, you can see where this installs in. You just finger tight the first screw and the second one. And now I'm going to tighten these up from the inside. There we go. Get these pretty tight because these will be seeing a lot of work. I'll be opening, closing this lid too much, but not too much because if you're looking, you ain't cooking. There we go. Now we'll install our thermometer. So we'll just take off this wing nut here. There we go. And install that on, open this up, put the washer on, put the wing nut on. And we'll just try to get it started on the thread, which is the hardest part. There we go. And now we wanna make sure that this is facing you so that the uh, 50 and, uh, and 400 degrees Celsius or 10750 you're facing the bottom. If you have it askew or the wrong way, then the manual says that it might read the wrong temperature. So we're just trying to keep that so it's facing you. All right, clicked in a little bit. Okay. So we've got that temperature control installed. There we go. You can see that it's facing me. It's uh, parallel to the ground. So that's good. Okay. Now for the side rack, we have this side rack frame and the actual rack itself. In my unboxing video, I actually thought this was a baffle plate or something that went in the smoker. Um, cause I wasn't familiar with it. Uh, usually a baffle plate will have holes in it to let the smoke get out. Um, but this is just a regular tray that's designed to go on the outside of the smoker to hold all your accessories and meat and everything. So the first thing we'll do is we'll take off these pre-installed screws here. So pretty easy, pretty convenient. I like how this thing comes with a lot of pre-installed screws because as I said before, it takes a lot of time to fish out all those little lock washers and washers and then manually put them on. So it's nice when it's already done for you. It speeds up the installation process a lot. So we'll get that finger tight there. Take another one and put it finger tight. And the last one here, sometimes you have to wiggle this around, but it gives you a large hole so you don't have to line it up perfectly, which is nice. 
Install that. Get that a bit tighter. Now it's important, and the manual says this, but it's important to never lift the smoker by this uh, frame because it just it doesn't carry the weight of the smoker and it could bend the frame or maybe even snap off. So that's important to remember. All right, now we've got our plate here. So we'll put the, the tray right there. And we've got our holders, which are in, our, in, our, in my pocket. So these go right here so that you can lift the rack out off of the frame which is a nice feature, I really like that. Um, you can set your meat down here. Uh, if you have like a really juicy piece of pork, you can put it right there. All the grease is gonna drip through, I guess, but uh, you can still sort of lift up the rack and take it to the kitchen where you need to prep it. So that's a nice feature. I think what would be nice is if there was a permanent rack underneath this thing to catch all the drippings that went through the, these holes here. But having said that, I, I wouldn't want to add anything else to this smoker to increase the price because it's already got a lot of features, a lot of great worksmanship and material in it. So that's probably a consideration when they're building these things. They want to keep the price point low. You don't want to put too many bells and whistles on it because then the end consumer has to pay for that. They have to raise the price of the smoker. So I'm happy with what this uh, smoker has for features and I think it's probably the best bang for your buck that you can get on the market right now for a pellet smoker. All right, we'll tighten that up, get the other side here. Again, this is kind of some finesse work, just an extra step you need to do in the process. All right, so there's our rack, and as you can see, put some stuff on there, maybe some meat after you're done cooking it, take to the kitchen, maybe you can prep your meat on there bring it over here, set it down. We've got our holders here for utensils. This is a pretty nice uh, rack here. I like how it's laid out. All right, now the final step is to install the baffle plate and the broiler plate and grates on the inside. So we've got our baffle plate or our broiler plate here, and this is going to do two things. It's going to allow the flame to come up from the uh, cooking chamber where the pellets are on fire and you're going to be able to grill over top of this because of the slats here. It's going to direct grease over to where the grease bucket is. And in order to do that, this needs to be on an angle. So this is a pretty difficult part and I struggled with this a little bit. So I wanted to show you guys exactly how I did it. You want to put it in at a little bit of an angle here with the right side down. And it's a bit of a finesse to get it in. And then you can slot it into the other side. You have to make sure it's above where the grease is gonna exit. And then, once it's set down like that, you wanna make sure that the edges of this little plate here are poking through to hold it in place. So that's how it's supposed to go. I'll show you a little bit on this side. So we have this metal sticking up there, that's what you want. The grease is gonna be directed this way through these grease channels and it's above, it's on top of this uh, area here so that uh, the grease can be directed down into that deflector and come out that grease hole there. So make sure that these edges aren't below that black piece of metal and that they're above it. Now we're going to install this little shield here. This covers the broiler unit. So if you don't want to barbecue over open flame, then you would put this over top of that. So normally when I'm cooking low and slow, I would never cook over direct flame. So this is pretty much always gonna be installed. So we'll just put that there and that's it. You just leave it there as a deflector. The second thing is we want to install our grates. So we'll put our grates in, slide in pretty easily, which is nice. Go in like that. And then we have a top grate. So this top grate, it looks like it'll slide back a little bit. Those little nubs will fit into the detente there. And then we have our top grate. 
So that's it guys. I hope you found this video helpful. And if you did, please hit that subscribe button so you can get notified of all my latest videos. I hope this helped you decide whether you want to purchase one of these pit boss units or it helped you install one that you've already purchased. All right guys, happy smoking.